Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, thanks for stopping by. My name is Tolu and on this channel I share content all around personal finance, budgeting, frugal living and I show you how to live your best life on a budget. If you're a returning subscriber, thanks for coming back to watch another video. It's amazing to have you here with me again today. So in today's video guys, what I'm going to be doing is bringing you season 2, episode number 10 of my Instagram live series, Tea Money Talks. On today's episode, I was joined by an amazing guest. Her name is Chloe and she's the founder of Chloe's Deal Club and over on Instagram she shares loads of different ways for you to save money and loads of money saving deals. During this conversation we spoke a lot about Chloe's Deal Club, what the inspiration behind her starting a platform was and all the different deals that she's able to source and how she's able to source them. So it was a really really good conversation, it was really really helpful. If you're into saving money and finding different ways to get the most bang for your buck, this is definitely the episode for you because in this episode she said some gold mines and some great gems in terms of how you can source the best deals and to make sure that you save money and really get your money working for you so like i say every single week guys do yourself a favor and grab yourself a drink some snacks and a pen and paper and get ready to take notes as you listen to episode number 10 of t money talks hey chloe how are you how's your evening how's your day been, been? yeah it's been good um it was actually the last day of my job today so it ah! has been a fantastic day <laughs> Congratulations. oh my gosh so it's gonna be a full-time venture now I'll be taking on a lot more of it um, between that and my other business. So we'll okay, see how okay, it goes. Okay. So oh, yeah, a very, very exciting day. <laughs> Talk about it. Okay, cool. Before we dive into the conversation and get started on live, yep. for the purpose of anyone in my audience that don't know who you are, just tell them a little bit about yourself and a little bit about what you do. Yep. So I am Chloe and I'm the founder of Chloe's Deal Club, which is an email membership to help people save money on beauty, travel, home and dining, where I email you fantastic deals every week. It's completely free to sign up on my website and I'll send you an email every uh, Sunday at six o'clock. And then I also have a paid membership as well if you wanted to get even more emails a week. Um, but yeah, my sole aim is to help as many people as possible to stop paying full price and start saving money by alerting you to what I think are some of the best deals I've been able to find absolutely fantastic okay cool so before we dive into the meat of the conversation what i like to do at the beginning of these tea money talks is a little bit of an icebreaker so it's yeah. just a game of would you rather so what i'll do is i'll give you <laughs> two options and then you'll tell me which one you'd rather do so okay. i've actually switched up some of the would you rathers on this one because i feel like i've done some of them to death so i've got a few random ones in there but okay yeah should, nothing too crazy so should be all right so the first one i've got cool would you rather have a rewind button or a pause button on your life so would you rather rewind go back or pause i would like a rewind button and that's because my dad's no longer here um so yeah i would love to be able to rewind and go spend more time with him <laughs> oh that's sweet nice lovely um okay next one would you rather okay would you rather work more hours per day but fewer days or would you rather work fewer hours per day and work more days work more hours a day and work fewer days i years ago when i used to work in a call center i would do 12 hour shifts to work a four day week and yeah. it was so nice like you're only ever working the way the shift pattern works you're only ever working like three days at a time and then you had a couple of days off so yeah it was great <laughs> I, I, I heard that too. Same. I think I prefer that too because what's the point of dragging it out? Let's just bang out the work, yeah. get it all done, yeah. and then we can relax and enjoy. So yeah, no, I'm with you on that one definitely. Okay, which one do you rather do, or which one do you rather do actually? Send a text or make a call. So are you a phone call or text person? Uh, a phone call because I'm impatient. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, would you rather go deep sea diving or bungee jumping? Gosh, I'd rather do nothing. Uh, I would say deep sea diving because I have my diving certificate already and bungee jumping. Oh, no way. Like, like my thinking of bungee jumping or skydiving or that, my hands sweat just even thinking <laughs> about it. So that is an absolute no-go. Okay, no, that's fair enough. Okay, and the last question. Would you rather have more time or more money? Um, I, that's a hard one. Um, I would say more time because then I have more time to make more money as well. So I feel you can do... you. You can do both of that. I like that. I like that answer. Actually, that's a very clever way of looking at it. Exactly, more time to make more money. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 
thanks for being a good sport and playing along. So <laughs> Thank you. Now we're going to get right into the heart of the conversation and what we're going to be discussing this evening. So I guess what I like to do at the beginning of the um, conversation is kind of get a bit more of a feel about you, understand a bit more of your background and your relationship with money. So how it was growing up and how it's changed over the years, if it's changed and like what it's like now. So yeah, just a bit of understanding of your history of money and how it is now. Okay, so I would say like anything and I think like everyone there's always room for improvement with money I feel that say being sort of within our niche people maybe assume that you're perfect with money and it's absolutely not that case at all um I would say I've definitely got better with money the older I've got and I've attributed more of a value to money than I used to when I used to go on like five nights out a week at uni and buy a new outfit for every single um, night out. I I feel I have always been to an extent a little bit obsessive about money that's potentially not that I want to have as much of it as possible but I'm, I've always been very very conscious of what I have and that's obviously what's lent me to um, start up Chloe's Deal Club because I want to be able to help other people be able to maximise as much of their money as possible um so yeah I would say there's been comments from like friends and family that I'm quite obsessive and like a little bit tight with money that they would put that within a yeah. negative context but I yeah. don't see that as negative I'm just wanting to keep as much aside as possible for my future and ultimately I want to have as much of it within my bank account as possible yeah. um so yeah I'm not sure if that's kind of rounded up what yeah you mean but I feel like it is always a work in progress and yeah if anyone is feel like they don't have a great relationship with money it is never too late to start thank you 100 percent. I'm definitely living proof of that yeah. so then what, what would you say was the catalyst for that is that uh your parents teaching you a lot about money or like what would you say is behind that whole you being quite not tight, I... with, money, tight with money but being really good with money or conscious of how you spend it Yep, I would say it was definitely my dad growing up. Um, like my dad had a very good job and he didn't need to be quite as strict with money as he was. I completely don't want that to sound kind of like braggy in any way. But yeah, um, he would always, no matter how much he earned, he would still want to keep as much of his money in his bank account as possible as we all do. Um, so it would be like if we went shopping at the weekend and we would be in like top man or Burton's, he'd be buying clothes and he'd get to the front of the checkout, it would be like, okay, can you let me know what discount I'm getting? And then the store staff would be like, what? No, no, <laughs> uh-huh, yeah, like that's just not, that's, you, you just wouldn't think you're going to a high street shop and haggle. <laughs> but he, he would literally be like, no, I'm wanting to get a deal on this. So even if he literally, they put through like a 10% shouldn't discount or like a 5% discount, wow. he'd be so happy and we would all be like, I am mortified. Like the amount of times we would walk out of shops being like, I cannot deal with this again. <laughs> um, and I never really understood it until I moved out and when I got my first job and it was in a call centre and that's when I started to realise the value of money. And it was like, if I was going out shopping or a night out or whatever, I would make sure that I would get like a voucher for a restaurant, which again, my dad used to do. And I'd be like, just pay full price. You don't need to pull out this voucher. Um, and yeah, when I was earned my own money, I realised, well, why wouldn't you do that? I've worked hard for my money that I want to be able to make it go as far as I can, essentially. So it's just been that upbringing with my dad always being like that. And then that's just gradually become more and more into my adult life to now where I'm trying to help other people do that too. That's absolutely amazing. That's yeah, that's so that's so cool, and that's really great. The fact that it, he had the money, so he could really have just paid uh, that, yeah. paid the full price for those items. But it's like, no, actually, I want to make my money stretch. So if yeah. I can, why not get a deal? Why should I pay full price if I don't have to? Yeah, right? yeah I, love, I love that attitude, and that's definitely what I need to do more of. I'm all right in terms of like going to markets and places like that to handle, yeah. but I would never think of going to like a high street store and trying to get a discount. So I'm going to actually try that. Yeah, and that's that's something I would do now if I go into a shop. I'd really? Like, you got any offers on? I was like, can like I've still got my student. I probably shouldn't be saying this on a live. I've still got my student <laughs> card from like six, seven years ago. That yeah, if you just kind of hold it a certain way, they can't see the date. So I'm like, student shouldn't discount. I was like, I'm almost thirty. I'm not quite sure how much longer I'll get away with it. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, you definitely shouldn't said that. But no one's gonna report you. That's fine. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, no, no. That's that's really cool. That's really impressive. Okay, so then I guess a bit more. Next question. So my son is literally just coming to the room and he's just standing. <laughs> He's literally just standing by the door looking at me. It's fine. Look any noise. Sorry, he just distracted me. Um, yeah. No, the next question I was going to ask was about um your career or your background yeah. work-wise. So yeah, what what your background is a little bit as much as you'd like to share anyway, yeah. and yeah, what kind of led you to um starting Closed Dogs Club? I guess you kind of given us a bit of an explanation, but yeah. I don't know if there's more depth that you wanted to go into in terms of your background and yeah, what kind of led you down this path. Yeah, so my background is in, in in marketing, more specifically digital marketing and social media. I knew it. So, yeah. <laughs> but I knew it. I could just tell from your page that you have a background in marketing. <laughs> so, yeah. So, design. So, yeah, yeah, no, um, so, yeah, so I've been doing that across various industries from sports to luxury goods. Um, and, yeah, it's about six, about six years I've been doing that so I really really enjoy it and I particularly love Instagram I love making creative content and I love how it's always changing and being able to keep up with that so that is why I started my Instagram like Chloe's Deal Club just started out as a hobby on Instagram just a random Sunday night I said to my husband I was like I'm just gonna go for it like if I help one person save money it's been worth it to me and yeah it just grew from there and then i was looking at ways that it could turn into a business to be able to help even more people um so yeah in marketing which I think has definitely been able to help me to grow my business and reach more people no 100% no I, I definitely knew you had a background in marketing <laughs> just so well designed and yeah you can just tell that you, you know about content creation so uh-huh. that's really really good and it's amazing what you've been able to achieve in such a short space of time with your platform so no it's really good and I guess everyone wants to save money isn't it so it's yeah. like, why people are like no no tell me more tell me more tell me more about the deal so no, it's absolutely fantastic and I guess it'd just be interesting to hear a bit more about your first year because I know recently you celebrated your one year anniversary didn't you yeah so it was one year of my emails so I started my Instagram it was actually two years ago this month and okay. that was just starting as a hobby but I turned it into a business a year ago um so yeah it's been really really good I've been blown away by the support I never thought a year or two years ago it would be yeah. where it is just now um like with everything you have good days and bad days but yeah um overall it's been the best thing I've ever done and if anyone is thinking of setting up their own side hustle like I would absolutely recommend to go for it you've nine times out of ten you've got absolutely nothing to lose by it and you never know what passion you'll find from it who you'll be able to help or yeah where it may potentially go that it could become a full-time job no it's so true and I guess advice wise where would you say to get how would you advise them to get started so if someone was to like be on this live right now thinking oh yeah it's amazing what you've done I want to do something similar what would you advise as first steps or I would say to find what makes you unique so obviously there's so many like deal alert email services like what I do but what makes mine unique is that it's very much very personal obviously like my name's to it I'm showing up daily on Instagram for it and people I like to think have that trust with me and it's created a really community vibe and because I don't do any ads within my emails there's no affiliate link so I'm not earning a commission off it it's purely honest deals that I think you will love as opposed to me being like I'm just going to send this out because I might earn 50p per person that buys it um so that's what makes Chloe's Deal Club unique so I would say find something that makes you unique or be able to put your own spin on something so that you can stand out yeah that's really really good advice I hope you guys are taking notes at home <laughs> yeah no, that's definitely it's good advice because I think sometimes what people can think is that you know there's so many people doing it already like there's no point in me even stepping out and trying yeah. it saturated but the reality is if you can find your USB or something yeah. to say you're apart from the next person then take that and run with it and the reality is as well that every single one of us is unique so even if we did have similar ideas the way I execute it and the way you execute yeah. it will be very different and maybe yeah. an audience that I can reach you wouldn't reach and vice versa or yeah people connect with people so yeah, yeah. don't don't be afraid to start like yeah. yeah and definitely don't be worried about what your friends and family might think a lot of time they're probably not your ideal customers or going to be your clients or customers anyway so do what is right for you and go with your gut and your heart and try not to be influenced on the opinions of others as hard as that may be sometimes but 
yeah. it, it's very very hard like I think that's probably one of the biggest um, barriers to get started is yes. thinking about other people like oh my gosh what's my family gonna think or my friends or people that know me what are they gonna say they're gonna be like you fraud why are you doing this or all these yeah. kind of things that you start thinking but yeah like you said the reality is they're not your customers yeah they're not they might support you at the beginning just to be nice but generally speaking they're probably not actually your audience so yeah just go for it life is too short not to give it a go so no, I totally, totally agree. Okay, cool. And then I guess in terms of your journey so far, what would you say has been the most challenging part of it? So last, I guess you said two years now since you actually yeah. started the platform and a year since the email side of it came to fruition. But yeah, what would you say has been the most challenging part of the journey so far? I would say, and this is because it's very much a personal brand and put myself out there as well. I would say it is realising that no matter how hard you try, you will never please everyone. And that's obviously just a reality of life, but within a sense of sort of putting yourself out there, it kind of takes to a next level and just try not to take things personally. If you lose a bunch of followers, for example, you know what, you need to focus on who's still there. So, yeah, I would say it is realising that you can't please everyone. So... (laughs) Yeah, that is so true. So how do you how do you actually deal with that, the negativity that you may receive or sometimes someone may not be happy with a deal or happy with an email you've sent or just, yeah, general criticism. Like, not everybody is positive. Yeah. You do get a lot of hate over here or there. So how do you deal with that if you get any? I've been lucky that I've not received, like, direct negativity. Like, I've yeah. not had people message me say anything oh, okay. that's bad or whatever. So I've I've been very, very lucky in that sense. But... It would just be, for example, if you send out an email and you think it's really great and then it gets unsubscribed. To it. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. like that. It, it took me, like, I've had to get my skin much thicker to that. But, um, yeah, I've got a fantastic, um, I've, I've, I've got a fantastic community around me. So I know that if someone unsubscribed, it just wasn't right for them and it's not necessarily a reflection on what you're doing. It might just be that they just purely weren't interested in that and that's fine because you'll just keep attracting people that are uh, hopefully so um no, yeah I uh-huh, but yeah I've been lucky that I've not had any like actual negativity. direct negativity if you know what I mean yeah no I totally know what you mean I'm, I'm in the same boat touch wood I haven't had Good. no direct <laughs> Results, but I have had the whole so I've got a YouTube channel so I've had a few times where I upload a video and straight away you see the subscriber count go down so it shows that someone's yeah. unsubscribed when they uh-huh. see the video it's like oh this is sad like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see my videos and then you post it and they unsubscribe but yeah you just have to not take it personal and realize that okay maybe your content isn't for them right now or yeah, yeah for whatever reason they've unsubscribed and it's fine yeah you your audience will find you in the right time and the ones that are there they like what you're doing so you can't please all the people all the time yeah. uh-huh. that's something i have to keep reminding myself as much as yeah try and say it doesn't affect me each time it is a little bit like oh especially when it happens straight after posting like uh-huh. i'm fine generally people on subscribing that's part of the process but it's just when you know that they've literally seen that notification and that's <laughs> no. it hurts a little bit. i know okay. but yeah it's just making sure that you're focusing on the people that are there to make sure yeah. that they're as happy as possible because if my community and my members are happy then it makes me happy <laughs> exactly no definitely focus on serving the audience that are there yeah, yeah. no 100 percent agree Okay, and then I guess I think I'll probably know similar what your or kind of know what your answer will be, but it'd be interesting to hear in your own words, like what the most rewarding part is or the best part about what you do. What would you say you love the most about it? It would be when I send out a deal and people reply saying that they've bought that, especially when it's something they were looking for anyway, and just know that you have literally made a difference to someone. Um I mean, there was like a message I got from someone yesterday who said that they were looking at switching energy and the deal, a deal that they got was only something like five pounds less a month than usually they wouldn't even bother switching. But they were like, remember your advice that all like the small amounts add up. So like that's 60 pounds a year. So just getting messages like that, that's going beyond the deals that just by seeing the deals that I share, they're applying that to other Mm. aspects of their life to save money. And it's just, it's, it's genuinely so rewarding yeah. that you're literally helping people save money. So yeah, I, I, it's 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 just one hundred percent the best part of the job. Amazing! I saw you did a post not too long ago, actually, when you were showing them how much money you'd a- been able to save. Yeah. I was like, wow! It's I can't remember the math. I was like, yeah. Wow. So it was um, just over. 
£250,000 in a year, which honestly, it took me like just under four weeks of spending hours a night going through emails and Instagram messages trying to um, work it out. But yeah, yeah, like absolutely, like I thought maybe about a hundred grand, but yeah. I was like, that is insane. Grand, <laughs> Quarter of a million, absolutely cool. impressive. And that's, <laughs> that's, that's huge. Um, okay, cool. And next question I have actually is just going on to deals. What would you yeah. say was one of the best deals that you've been able to source this year or a couple, if there's a couple that you want to share? Yep, um, I would say, well, I'll go by which ones I've had the most reply to from was, members. Yeah, so, that makes sense. Uh, one would be a recent one that I sent to my VIP members and it was, do you know the Beauty Box subscription? Yeah. Uh, Rockabox. Yeah, I've heard of it, yeah. yeah. Um, so they had one where it was £10 for a box. It wasn't even a subscription. It was just you buy a one-off box and then they had, one of them had an Illamasqua lipstick in it so that it was six products in total and you only find out what one of them was in advance so one was an Illamasqua lipstick that was 17 and the other one was an Illamasqua primer that was 34 so straight away you're saving between seven pounds and 24 pounds depending on what box you went for because the box is only a tenner and then you're still getting an additional five products and the products when members are sending me photos where it was it was full size products they were still receiving it wasn't even you know a lot of beauty boxes at three samples yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah like that deal went absolutely wild I think that's probably my most replied to email for VIP members which um yeah I was like that's such a good deal like I was I'm trying to be very very strict with my spending just now and I was like I don't need it I don't need it <laughs> like I want it <laughs> so you didn't get it no no oh, wow I know, like, it's very, at the. I think because I've been used to deal hunting for so long, I'm much more strict in my spending because I could just go crazy and buy every single deal I email out. But I, I absolutely don't want people to do that. I want them to only be buying the things that they need. That they need. Yeah. yeah. No, that's good. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. So then how do you go about, I don't know if you can t- give away the trade secrets, actually. How do you... <laughs> Are you able to say a bit, a bit about how you actually get find these deals? Is it just a case of like combing the internet and searching online kind of thing? Yeah, I have, I have um, a lot of alerts set up with okay. like I have a separate email where it filters all the deals through to it. Nice. Um, obviously, just so my inbox doesn't just explode. Yeah, but I would say if you're looking for the deal, a deal, the three things to always look at are make sure that you're price matching, looking for discount codes, and making sure you find cash back as well so by using like applying those three things every single time you buy something you are I'd say like 99% guaranteed to be saving something even if it's just 10% still 10% is better in your pocket so yeah I feel like those are like the three ingredients to being able to find a deal I should have wrote that down I'll I'll watch (laughs) it instead of again just for the benefit of those of us that want to take notes (laughs) yeah (laughs) so uh, price matching yeah cash back and discount codes Cashback and this, okay, yes, I'm good. I think the price matching is one I need to work on yeah. most. Discount uh, codes, I do love a good discount code. Yeah. So for price matching, if you just Google what the item is, even better if it has a specific like supplier reference. Yeah. If you Google that, and then most of the time, just looking on Google Shopping at the top yeah. will give you sort of a brief overview that you can quickly analyze. Is or isn't this a good deal? Or even if it's something generic like like a dog bed just for talking sake yeah um, say it was something like that even if you just obviously it's not necessarily going to be like a specific brand or specific model even just googling something like that and then you'll start to recognize what sites for what kind of category you're looking for have the best deal and then yeah i feel like my brain just has all you just know that yeah. on like if i'm someone asked me to look for something or I want to do a deal on something I just know what sites what facts are going to have the best price now because obviously I've been doing it for so long yeah no, that makes sense that's absolutely fantastic <laughs> okay okay so moving on actually that, that's a good segue actually into my next question which is about <laughs> money saving tips so what would you say are your three biggest money saving tips that you can share with us okay I feel like I kind of covered them in that last one I need, need to get a thinking cap on here okay. um Right, we'll get a bit more specific. So for cashback, this is, I, if any of my followers are watching this, they'll be sick of me banging on about this app. But I would say you need to download Airtime Rewards. It is, uh, uh, is it something you use? No, so I heard someone mention this to me. No, I don't. Right, it is literally the best app that's ever been invented. Um, so it's 
like it's a cashback app but it tracks automatically so you link your bank cards to it i know some people are a bit like oh i don't want to let my bank card but they're fully regulated by the fca and have this i'm gonna get all technical here but they 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 have the things they're meant to have <laughs> to, to make sure that it's yeah, yeah. secure um and yeah every it basically recognizes the transactions on like on your bank so say you were buying something from boots Mm. You just buy it as usual. It's not like other cashback apps where you need to be putting, yeah, like, through. scanning your receipt or clicking a specific link. You literally just spend as normal. It will recognize the transaction on your bank and then we'll send you a notification to say that you've earned cashback on it. So a lot of the time you could be spending and you actually don't even realize that you're earning cashback. And Premark is on it as well. And <gasps> I'm 99.99% sure this is the only way you can get cashback in Premark. I didn't even yes. know that was possible. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, which, obviously, that's a double bonus because it's already so affordable. So it's like three, three and a half percent back, which it, it fairly adds up. When you're like me and you shop a lot in Primark, yes. it definitely adds up. <laughs> and yeah, it's like, it's just, it's so easy. It's basically free money. You get, you can then, they have like a referral scheme as well. So you can, if your friends and family aren't using it, you can give your referral code to them. You earn 50p when they sign up, they get 50p. And mm. the thing with it as well is the money is redeemed against your phone bill. So it's not like other cashback apps where you cash out to your bank. So it redeems against your phone contracts, them only or whatever. Um, so what that's what I love about it as well is it's offsetting an expense I already have. You're as opposed to me just taking it out and squandering it, I was like, I'm just reducing a bill I've already got, which is a bonus in my book. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, so I know what I'll be doing after this live. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, what was it, the other money saving tips? So, discount codes, I would recommend using an automated browser extension, such as Honey or Pouch. Um, so, they just link on to whichever browser you use and yeah. then when you go on a certain website so you went onto Nike's website you'll get a little like a, 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 a wee notification at the top and then you click that and it will tell you all the discount codes that are available and when you get to the checkout it will automatically apply them for you obviously yeah. they might not always work they might be expired they might for example the discount codes for a pair of trainers and you've got a jumper in your basket so it might not work but yeah. it's always worth doing it and it saves you having to do the old school manual way of make Shopping discount codes and things. go through all yeah. the different websites so different websites. Um, yeah that's a great one and then uh have a you can also get price matching websites hmm. so there's price runner and price spy so you just go on that put in um what you're looking for and it will compare prices across various websites so not not every single website is on there so it might not always be the best price but it'll give you sort of an idea yeah. of what is and what isn't a good price it will add time onto your shopping so you may not be guaranteed a saving but it's it's always worth it alternatively you can sign up to my emails and i'll do all this work for you so you don't have to <laughs> That sounds good to me. <laughs> I'm on the list already, actually, I think. Yeah, so oh, no. thank you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm all for saving money. So, yes, yeah, yes. fantastic. Okay, cool. So, then, next question I have for you is in terms of the rest of 2021. So, what's next for Chloe's Deals Club? Have you got what? Well, is there anything new or anything that we can be looking out for? Or, yeah, how does the next, I guess, rest of the year and the next year look for the business? Yep, so obviously there'll be more amazing deals, as always. And yeah. then I would like to focus on bringing out some products. Um, so I'm not going to say too much about that just now, um, but I've been on and off working on something for a while. So now that I'm going to have more free time, I'll hopefully maybe get that in the next month, month or two, maybe. Um, and then I... When you say products, have... okay, I know you can't do too much. Is it yeah. a physical or digital product? Physical product. Um, I will have a digital version, but I think I would, for this type of product, I like a digital one because, it's, it's, sorry, I said that wrong. For this type of product, I like a physical, physical one. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but I'll probably have both options. So the digital one will probably be like a more accessible price point. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, looking at that, if I ever get around to it, <laughs> and yeah. I'm also planning a podcast as well. <gasps> Um, which I think I've chatted to you about already saying I, I would love to have you on it so oh, definitely. yeah um, it's not going to be 
solely deal focused it's going to be talking more kind of like broader wider money saving and mm-hmm. um, because I just feel on my Instagram if I start talking about investing and too much about budgeting and that it's just getting a bit confused with everything yeah. going on so yeah I think I'm going to make that a more wider educational thing where obviously I know that in school we're just never taught what we should be about money you're like oh, okay. all this random stuff and then you're like this doesn't does not help me be an adult exactly um, so yeah just hopefully give some more insight onto things that you can be doing to be maximizing your money no that'd be amazing so then would that be still on chloe's still club account or would you literally set up a second account for the podcast I... I'm still not sure. I, I don't think it will be called Chloe's Deal Club from what I'm thinking of already because it's. I want it to be broader money saving. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I've got a few names in mind. It's just. Oh, that meant in terms of the platform. So would you? Oh, host, oh, oh right, would you, right, 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 right. Yeah. So would you set up a separate page for it on Instagram, or would it all be on this page, but obviously a different name for the podcast? Yeah, I, I think I would keep it all in here because yeah, I, I don't. Think. I don't think my brain could cope with. <laughs> Well, um, with trying to keep up on a second Instagram and make twice the amount of posts. <laughs> no, that's cool. No, that's exciting. And time frame wise, is that going to be next few months? Do you reckon it's going to be this year, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm ho- hoping it will be this summer. I'm just sort of in oh, wicked. the very early stage of all that. Like I'm looking up um, for all, all the equipment to get just now, and like I've got like a list about the size of like yeah. I can see that like that size of all the different topics so yeah it's just kind of I feel like it's like starting an Instagram again of putting yourself out there and that fear of being like can I do it so yeah, yeah I think I'm just gonna go for it so you definitely can do it though see yeah, how it's it goes. <laughs> no it's definitely gonna be amazing okay so the next question isn't actually on script but it's just a question okay. that I actually had so I'm just interested to learn more about you and how you kind of do it all so obviously mm-hmm. just prior to today anyway <laughs> You were working a job, so I yeah. assume you was, were you doing full time. Yeah. Or part-time? Yes, uh-huh. so you're working full time and also doing this on the side, which in itself you could call a full time job. Yeah. Like how, how how are you able to do it all? Like manage it all? Like yeah, give us some pointers. I guess tell yeah. us a bit about how you were able to do it and any advice that you can give to anybody else that wants to do something similar. Like how how you're able to manage it all. Yeah. Um, was to throw something else into the mix. I actually, have a second business as well where I do um, where I do social media management and and, and Instagram coaching. Um, oh it's just the the pandemic when it started last year, and I was fairly sure I was going to lose my job in yeah. my first bout of furlough. That I thought, like, just that panic, being like, I need other security than just relying on like one job yeah. so yeah um, I've probably taken it a bit too far now <laughs> um <laughs> extra jobs yeah <laughs> yeah uh, I would say it's just managing your time it's, it's I'm not gonna lie it's still a work in progress for me I still work too much I still like I'm neglecting other areas of my life that I shouldn't be so I'm hoping I'll be able to get much more of a balance now um mm-hmm. being at home a lot more um so yeah I feel like I'm still probably not in this stage to be fully providing info on that because I'm still yeah. trying to figure it out myself no, no, and get no, sort of no. a better work life so um, but yeah then. I would the, the things I would tell myself would be mm. um to make sure just you're managing your time and make sure you're scheduling time off as well and if something needs to wait till tomorrow it can wait till tomorrow yeah exactly <laughs> it's easier said than done especially yeah. like when you when you're so passionate about what you're doing and you want to get it done, it's like, no, let me just work an extra hour and then before, you know, 3 a.m. and you're like, no, I actually need to go yeah. to bed. Oh, I've been there so many times going to my full-time job on like three hours sleep and I'm like, this needs to stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually not good at all. Someone wants to join the live, but I don't know if that's an error. <laughs> I'm scared. I did that once on a live and yeah, it didn't go well, so. Oh, really? <laughs> I just strangers into the conversation. Sorry. If you have a question, though, you can put it in the question box and we'll answer it rather than bringing you in on the line. <laughs> okay, yeah. I, I, I definitely feel you should start a podcast as well. Do you think? Oh, I mean, if you're hosting this every week, you absolutely should. Do you know what? It's funny you should say that because it's something I've been thinking about doing. And what I wanted to try and do is actually see if I can use the audio from these lives to kind of work, do a podcast. But I don't know how it would actually work. Yeah, so I'm, that's something I need to think about. But I do actually want to, for Series 3, 
this is exclusive for you guys on this live actually series three i actually do want to do a podcast of it but it's just trying to work out how i can do both without having to like double my efforts yes uh-huh. i'm trying to get guests to come onto the live and then get guests to come to the podcast might be a bit much but yeah, if i could yeah. do it all in one then yeah definitely yeah. but yeah, yeah. no I, I would actually like to do it i think yeah, podcasts would be probably easier because I don't know. I feel like this live thing can be quite. That's the thing with the podcast as well. You could probably pre-record it and have those yeah. conversations and edit what you need to edit. Whereas with live, it's just like you kind of go yeah. with the flow. Whatever happens, happens. So, yeah, and know. you also don't need to put makeup on or look nice for a podcast. <laughs> that is the Bonus. best part. <laughs> that's literally best. listen if you saw me an hour before this live, I didn't look like this. I was like finished work and I was like quickly let me get ready because I'm ready. I'm live. I, I want to get to that stage where I come on the live, but I don't think I ever would to be honest because yeah, you, can't just, you have to put your best foot forward. My husband always says, like, yeah. <laughs> I just fall off out of bed onto the Instagram live. Uh, yeah, I can't do that. But yeah, yeah. no, no, definitely. the podcast is something, it's in the pipeline. Good. Season three, I wanted to do it for season two to be honest, and it just didn't happen. So I was like, okay, season three, we're going to try and do a podcast version of it because yeah, I yeah. think it'll be really good. I just want to um, maybe change the conversations as well. Like, so what you were saying before, I feel like I want to open up. Like, although you could say it's quite bored what I talk about anyway, but I want to still talk to yeah. other people that are not necessarily in the finance space as well, just other people yeah. on different financial journeys. I think that would be really interesting. But Yeah. Uh-huh. So I kind and of... Dive- what were you going to say? <laughs> um, and that's, that's what I absolutely love about, like, the personal finance slash money community on yeah. Instagram is just how much we want to help other people because it can be I feel especially in the UK we don't talk about money enough it's such a taboo subject okay. and yeah it's almost a bit kind of it can almost be if you talk about money people are like I, I don't want to be involved in this so I think it's something that it's great what counts like you and what all the all the other counts within sort of our sphere are doing as yeah. well to be able to like o- to, to, to be able to open up up this conversation this topic yeah. about money and make it not intimidating exactly now that is literally what i wanted to do when i started doing this live so i'm glad you appreciate it because yeah, yeah. That's what I to do. make it okay to talk about money and just have conversations with other people and learn from each other because like yeah. even from this conversation we've had today look how many notes i've taken and yeah just think <laughs> and I implement and I'm sure that's the case for other people that are either listening now or listening later on to the replay they're going to take things away from these conversations and that's why yeah that's why I do what I do on this platform so hopefully it can help those other people as well on their journeys they can take little things even if it's just one thing that you get from every single life then it's worth it isn't it so yeah uh-huh. yeah I'm definitely going to keep doing them so two more episodes so this is episode 10 and we've got 11 and 12. I can't believe it's been 10 weeks. But yeah, so 10 no. weeks back to back every single Thursday. So then, yeah, two more weeks. And then I'll take a break for the summer holidays and be back yeah. again. So that's uh-huh. the plan. But, but I'm yeah. excited to see how it goes for you. But I, I think it's it's absolutely fantastic what you're doing. And I love the like variety that you've got within mm. your lives and within your content. So I think you're doing brilliant things to be able to help people with the money. Oh, thank and you. What was it? You paid like 36 grand of debt off. That is insane yeah we did and I, do you know what it's so funny because at the time it was it was nuts i can't lie it was crazy but then now that i'm out of it to think, think when i think that that was my story i'm like wow that that was actually yeah. me i don't know but by that it doesn't feel like that happened to me if that makes mm-hmm. any sense but yeah it definitely did happen to me there was a time yeah. where we were in a lot of money financially but yeah. yeah two years two and a half years it's been now since we became debt free so yeah That's fantastic nice. do you, you feel like you're still in that sort of mindset where you're so conscious of your money or have you kind of relaxed a little bit now the months are going on listen i do you know on my youtube channel i do videos where i share my budgets on a monthly basis uh-huh. anyone that watches my videos will know that i've been doing so bad with my budgets over the last few months <laughs> but no it's so bad when you're on that debt-free journey it's like you have that tunnel vision and you're focused you're like no i need to pay off this debt i need to pay off this debt so we were so strict we were so disciplined but it's like when, when we became debt-free it's like now the financial decisions that we're making we if we don't save that money, for example, or we don't put that money into investing, we're still okay. So it's, now it's a different kind of discipline that we need. We need some of what you and your dad had. So that yeah. whole, <laughs> even though the money's there, it doesn't mean you need to spend it. And just because yeah. when you've got that money, you can make it work better for you and be more intentional with how you spend it and allocate it. And I think that's what we're trying to get to now. So it's like, okay, we need to be serious about how we're spending this money. Yes, the money's there, but it doesn't mean we should sponsor it. So yeah, I, it's definitely a lot harder I've found since becoming debt-free to actually stay on top of this money when we were in that debt 
we were so disciplined and then since becoming debt free i wouldn't say we've fallen off like we do save and we do pay, like we've been trying to pay off our mortgage so that's something that we definitely been doing overpaying and stuff like that but it's not with the same intensity that we we're paying down that yeah. debt uh-huh. yeah i definitely I mean, want it's, to it's, it's absolutely not it absolutely wouldn't be healthy to be that restrictive for so long because yeah, you'd <laughs> probably end up back in that same situation if you restricted yourself so much. So, True. yeah, and I, I, I honestly think it's great that you're so open about it, like you're saying that you do share your share, share, share your monthly budget on YouTube. So, yeah, it, again, it's just breaking down those walls of finance and yes. letting people see that what they're doing is right or areas that they can improve as well. No, definitely, 100%. And yeah, that's the kind of feedback I get on YouTube as well. So like, you know, sometimes you're doing content, you think, Is it, what am I doing? Does anyone actually care about this? But then you get the odd comment here or there and people are like, oh my gosh, thank you. Thanks to this. Um, I've now started budgeting or you've shown me an area where I can save money or you've shown me how to actually allocate my money. Because these are things that you think that everyone should just know. But if no one's taught you it, you don't just know these things automatically. Like, how much do you spend a month on food? Not that there's a right or wrong answer, yeah. but do you even have an allocation when it comes to food? Like budgeting in that way wasn't something that I was even doing before my debt-free yeah. journey. So that's why on YouTube now, yes, I share my budget. I share the categories. I share how much we spend on the different areas. And yeah, the feedback is that it helps people because it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, so I am spending quite a lot on takeaways every month. Maybe I don't need to spend £500 on takeaways. Maybe I can bring it down to two. And yeah. those are the kind of things that people are now starting to think about because they yeah. see that content. And I know for me, when I was on my debt-free journey, I was looking for that kind of content on YouTube yeah. and I struggled to find it. I was able to find accounts in the US, but I wasn't really able to find anyone in the UK that was talking about budgeting to that level of detail anyway. And yeah, so I was like, do you know what? I would like, I wish I had that content for myself. So now yeah. that I'm in this position, why don't I just share that content online to help other people? So yeah. that's kind of what I do. So yeah, I, I do talk about money a lot to be fair. And yeah. some people, family and friends, they think it's cringe, but it is, <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. yeah it uh-huh. is it's helpful it does help other people and i yeah. enjoy it I really yeah do. Uh-huh. and that's that's what it's all about is you 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 get that fulfillment as well from helping others saying, saying what you're saying there about the amount to spend on takeaway it just reminded me there when jamie and i first started going out like seven eight years ago whatever we were like addicted to nando's i've i've, I've been able to rein it in now but i'm not even kidding we used to go to nando's three times a week like oh, for wow. months and then i was like sat through and worked it out being like i just don't understand why I'm so skint at the end of every month and I was like we spent like, three like, times in yeah. a week uh-huh like because it, it, it was like we used to stay in the city center so it yeah. was like a two-minute walk from our house and then if we got home we we're like do you want to just get Nando's but <laughs> yeah like and I've worked out how many hundreds of pounds we spent on Nando's in a month imagine. and I was like oh my god That's so it's all doing. things like that like I'm so strict how do you like your chicken how do you like your chicken um well I used to get mango and lime and i know you're yeah. probably gonna think that's not as spicy but they stopped mango and lime just now so oh, no i'm to get a uh, lemon and hair brat with halloumi lemon and, her- and okay. extra chili jam and garlic bread Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> so specific you know it all it's one of them ones you don't even have to look at the menu when you go to you I know. It's just like, I know exactly what i want thank you yeah well i actually got like that in nando's when we would go in the guy would just tell us a table number and just tell us to go <laughs> straight up towards we were like this this is really embarrassing now oh my gosh so the wait is even new year new year day boss it's like oh yeah i know we want to get this yeah <laughs> absolutely insane oh gosh okay so uh, one last question before you go it was um, just in terms of advice. So obviously we've covered quite a lot in this live. You shared so much about the different ways we can save money on yeah. different things, which is fantastic. Um, in terms of any other advice, anything that you haven't covered, any last words of encouragement or just yeah, any last thoughts that you want to share with the guys before we wrap up? Yep. So I would say if you are looking to save any sort of money, it is absolutely never too late to start. And I think I said this at the beginning but no matter what stage in life you're at, you can always be saving money. And no matter what position you're in, you can be saving money, basically. Um, and for when you're buying things online, and you'll probably hear this a lot around Black Friday, is a deal is only a deal if you were buying it anyway, and the prices are just, otherwise you're spending money. So just because you've seen a pair of trainers at half price, and you were never, you don't need another pair of trainers, you're then spending that money and you're not saving that 50%. So just make sure you apply that to things when you're buying it. It's very, very easy to get sucked in, especially now things have opened 
up and you can maybe go shopping again you might be a bit more spend happy but just try and only buy the things you actually need especially if it's a sale item as well yeah 100 oh my gosh i've fallen prey to that so many times <laughs> like i just end up coming back with well i don't do it anymore but it was a time where i just literally come back with things randomly it's just like oh, i've got lots of sausages i've ended up yeah. like a sausage how uh, what sausage am i gonna eat i don't need that much sausage but because it's on yeah. offer it's like, it wasn't even on my list. It wasn't something I went out to buy, but because it's on offer, I have to have it. So yeah, no, yeah. definitely. It's so true. It's only a deal if you need it. Otherwise, you're yeah. spending money. You're not saving money. So no. Yeah. Friend. And saying that about the supermarket, do not shop hungry because you will just fill up your trolley with all the sweets, <laughs> all the pizzas, all the cakes. Facts. <laughs> 100% fact. That is me. When I'm eating on an empty stomach, I am buying croissants. I'm buying brioche bread. I'm buying... Yeah. And this is all before I've even left the store. So I'm eating... <laughs> I'm that person that goes to the till with like the half drunk drink and the half <laughs> so yeah no, it's funny. <laughs> I do it all the time it's so bad and I've got the kids into that same habit so we're just there eating as we're shopping so, yeah. <laughs> that's so funny yeah it's very oh my gosh Chloe it's been amazing like literally I've really really enjoyed our live and thank you thank so you. much for coming on and sharing your expertise when it comes to saving money and sourcing great deals absolutely fantastic so guys well, I guess actually you could just quickly give yourself a final plug. Okay, yep. So you can follow me on Instagram at Chloe's Deal Club and you can sign up to my free um, email newsletter which goes out every Sunday night at six o'clock um, at chloesdealclub.com. So it's completely free to sign up to that and I will send you one of the best deals I have found that week for no charge for you. <laughs> it's a no-brainer, guys. So you know what you need to do. Go sign up now by the link in her bio but yeah thank you chloe you've been absolutely amazing really enjoyed this live and i'll speak to you soon thank you guys for tuning in